All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about um, extensions of functions, which are basically just like if you start with some function and then you want to like add points to the domain of the function and define new values there, uh, then what you get from that from that process is an extension. It's called an extension of the original function. Uh, and like in theory, you're allowed to do it however you want. It's just that most of the time, we're interested in extensions of functions that have like certain properties, okay? So the general definition, okay, uh, which they don't actually give a number, but it doesn't, I mean, I guess it's not really a big thing, but um, so a function f tilde, sorry, that's supposed to be a tilde, is an extension of a function f uh, if um, f till if if well yeah so if the domain of f is a subset of the domain of f tilde. and f tilde of x equals f of x for all x in the domain of f. Equivalently, in the language of restrictions, uh, f is an extension of f if um, F is the restriction of F tilde to S, where S is the domain of F. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, restriction, thinking about restrictions is kind of going one way. So, like, you can take a function and then you can restrict it uh, to get a new function that has a smaller domain. Or you can take the, the, you, the, the function with the smaller domain and you can extend it. And one possible extension would be the original function you started with. Of course, if you restrict a function and then extend the restriction, there are many ways to extend a function. There's infinitely many ways. So there are many extensions of the, of the restricted function, which may not be the original function you started with. But you know, oh well. Uh, OK, so let's see. We are interested in, so our main question is like, okay, so question, when can we find continuous, oops, extensions, right? Um, so for so like uh okay so in general right for for there to be a continuous extension of f which is defined uh well yeah i don't know whatever um clearly f self must be continuous, but this is not enough. So um, as an example, right, we've seen, you know, consider um, f of x, consider, you know, trying to extend the domain of f of x equals uh, sine of 1 over x from 0, 1 to the closed interval 0, 1, right? To include the point 0, we've seen that um, there is no 
value, we can pick for f tilde of zero such that f tilde is continuous, right? Because the picture, remember, is that we have this insane oscillation and then, you know, and then it kind of broadens out, obviously. But, uh, you know, it gets like thicker and thicker and thicker. Um, so there's no, you know, there's no consistent limiting value as you get close to zero, right? Even though this is continuous, right? F, of, F is continuous. on um, on uh, zero one, okay? So you might think that like, okay, well, you know, obviously you're not gonna be able to be able to extend this function because it's oscillating, you know, infinitely fast near zero, right? Um, and that's sort of true. I mean, that that is actually a, a fair way to characterize what's going on here, but consider this next example, okay? And this is the example they give in the book. So example, seven, um, say f of x is x sine of one over x for x in, oops, open zero, one over pi closed. Okay, so they have a picture. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna make a little cut here while I draw the uh, graph of this function. Okay, so I drew the uh, the graph here, and uh, as you can see, it kind of oscillates between the lines f of x equals x and f of x equals negative x. There's also a bit of a nicer diagram that they drew in the textbook, but um, anyway, this is what I'll be working with. So as you can see, right, um, well, this function does, because of the one over x in here, it does oscillate, you know, an infinite number of times as you get close to zero, but it oscillates with decreasing amplitude, right? And actually, if you think about it, right, if you took any sequence of points in on like the x-axis that were walking towards zero, right? And then you took the limits of the values of f, you would end up with, with zero as the limit, right? So, um, so clearly if xn approaches zero with xn, let's say greater than zero for all x, for all n, sorry, uh, then f of xn approaches zero, right? I mean, that's almost clear just from the, just from the, the graph of it, right? So uh, now if this is true, this means we can define f tilde of x equals f of x for x in zero, one pi, uh, one over pi, sorry, and then uh, zero for x equals zero, and and f tilde will be a continuous extension of f to the domain zero, one over pi, the closed interval, right? So. Uh, the question is like, what characterizes when we can do this? And uh, as you might've guessed, the answer is uniform continuity. So in this case, it turned out that F is uniformly continuous and that's exactly what allows us to do this, to define it uh, at zero and get a consistent, you know, continuous function that way. Um, so anyway, I think uh, I'm actually going to call it for this part and then in the next part I will prove the theorem about um, about extending uniformly continuous functions.